Hey YouTube, I'm Mr. Terry, a high school history teacher. Welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video. All right, I know you all have been waiting a long time for this. In fact, you've been waiting two years because Salmonella finally uploaded. After a long hiatus, he has brought us something and how can you not be excited? All right, by the looks of it, this video is titled Where Animals Scientific Names Come From. And you know it's gonna be more than that because it's gonna get the Salmonella treatment. All right, the original video link is down below. Make sure that you have subbed and have viewed, shared all of his videos. I mean, how can support for him not lead him to wanna make more content for us? All right, I'll review this video with you, give you my commentary. Let's have some fun and let's get started. Oh, we've missed that intro, haven't we? Ah, hey kids, I just woke up from a nap I took in January of 2020 and boy are my <laughs> arms tired. Let's see what I missed. Hmm, Queen's dead, war in Ukraine, the Taliban's back. What, what is, <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> they made a movie called Scoob. <laughs> Unprecedented global pandemic, Space Jam 2, some popular guy named Brandon. Yep, that just about covers it. Anyway, we would you think about it? Holy crap, if you starting with the beginning of the pandemic to now, there is a lot that has happened, like historically significant things that have now happened in this two and a half years since he, you know, it's January, he said when he stopped right now, it's beginning of October 2022. There's a lot. It, it's gone. Like, if people were in a coma for this long, there's a lot that they're going to have to catch up on. We all know about the scientific names of animals, but did you ever wonder what they actually mean? To find out, we must look to taxonomists. I just thought they're, they're the guys Latin. responsible for the systems of nomenclature we use to classify organisms. And boy, are they convoluted. First, you got the big eight. Domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, God, species. I've seen plenty of mnemonic devices for this, but since classes. the D just showed up in the 90s and is still disputed by some scientists, he's usually not included. So allow me to suggest a few. Dizzy kids puke cereal on fair ground staff <laughs> dumb kittens pushing cups over feeds growing spite oh donkey kong's <laughs> fucking serendipitously the way this whole thing no. works diff don't do that one uh biology teacher friends of mine don't don't do that okay there's you got to get a scientific consensus holy for crap slightly depending on which kingdom you pick so today we'll be sticking to the animal one because that one's the coolest and i'm in it so what constitutes each taxon is yeah, pretty arbitrary animals. they basically just serve to act as another set of branches in the tree that taxonomists build the one exception is species which is generally defined as any group of animals that can have babies with each other that aren't sterile freaks mule liger zedonk yeah. skunk ape they can live fulfilling <laughs> lives but they're all shooting blanks so they don't count on what the on the other hand, in our innumerable trespasses against God, we can make things yeah. like Chidane Danes, which actually work. So dogs oh, are dogs God. are dogs. Have you heard about the like what they have to do, breeders have to do to be able to get, yeah, something like a Great Dane and a, uh, and a Chihuahua to be able to mate? I, there's a lot of manipulation, I think, that has to happen to that. We've ruined animals. They used to be wolves, and now they're... They, look like rats this is against god we can make things like chidane danes which actually work so dogs are dogs are dogs besides species though it's the oh, wild must west be ugly. in here plenty of times eight tiers isn't even enough for scientists so they just stick new sub levels in between legions cohorts tribes series divisions and if you want to keep going you can throw all oh my kinds gosh. of prefixes on any of these Why? for even more layers there's even subspecies which the more pedantic of you may think to yourselves that creating names for subspecies at all kind of undermines the single somewhat agreed upon definition in the whole tree to that my friends taxonomists Jeez. say uh -huh. but while that's pretty complex the actual Is names that John themselves Green? are pretty easy to wrap your head around though taxonomists may hide behind their fancy greek and latin the vulgate is no yeah, substitute for wit now i've scraped that was always annoying learning like human anatomy or biology everything using latin a language that no one speaks anymore in a useful capacity it's like oh gosh i guess just because so many languages derive from latin i guess that justified it but gosh that was always Made it so difficult. Through the scientific names of a load of species, and most of them can be split into a few categories. The simplest ones are the animals that already have names in Greek or Latin. It's a lion, I'm calling a Leo. Done. Tiger, it's a tigris. Cat, it's a caddis. Oh, God. Multi word names can be translated <laughs> the same way. For the golden eagle, we got Aquila chrysatos. Gold eagle eagle. They decided to be a show off and do eagle in Greek and Latin. Essentially the same though. But if a species <laughs> is too specific or exotic for a one to one translation, that's when you gotta get a little creative. A lot of the time, it's 
inspiration comes from just giving the creature the old once over and pointing out some cool looking body part. Generally, the more distinctive and identifying feature it is. We the do the same thing in history. We just get leaders and poke them around a bit and be like, all right, uh, you are the great. More likely it'll get in the name. That's For example, happens, Homeboy took one look at this thing and said, yup. Red triangle slug. I'm yes. going on break. We call this That's thing what a we need more unicorn, of. almost like that means one horn or something. Yes. Also, some guy deadass looked at an octopus and said, well, all they got is heads and feet. I'm going to call them head foot. And now biologists everywhere say cephalopod unironically. Duh. Matter of fact, if it's got feet, chances are that's part of its name somewhere. You got four feet, six feet, eight feet, ten feet, two feet, equal feet, both feet, double feet, stomach feet, lip feet, sucker feet, wing feet, big feet, slow feet, or feet, both feet, joint feet, no feet, 10,000 feet. Feet, cows feet, spade feet, cat feet, small feet. If it doesn't look that interesting. Dude, that is what he's been doing for two years. He spent two years, two and a half years now, writing that song. That's what he's been doing. We figured it out, everyone. Interesting. Another thing to point out is where you found it. This could be a territory like American Bear or Siamese Crocodile, or just a habitat like Woods Macaque or Toilet Rat. But that's boring. Yeah. We need to look at the men behind the magic and what drives and motivates them. Now, if there's one thing that the scientific community loves, it's clout. And there's no better yeah, way yeah. to go down in history than plastering your own name on some shit you found. But not all fields sure. have the same volume of things to scribble something. the old John Hancock over. On the one end, you got physicists just making up their own slightly different form of ionizing radiation measurement and even then only the top dogs got away with it now zoology any little goober flouncing through the underbrush can say this one has 13 spots but the one in the books only got 11 i will call him splinkus's ladybird alternatively plenty of biologists have True given story. shout outs to their contemporaries both other biologists and those across the academic gamut from geologists to physicists to explorers and more naturally darwin's got a shitload but even the background characters get immortalized one way or another who are thompson grant Summering, Erlinger, Speak, and Cuvier. Don't care. I don't know. But they've all got gazelles, so they must be pretty cool. That's lame. Name them after the animals, not yourself. It's not a comet. Erlinger, Speak, and Cuvier. I don't know. But they've all got gazelles, so they must be pretty cool. Of course, other times, the name checks go to people who had fuck all to do with anything except for one taxonomist being a fan of theirs. Plenty of popular celebrities have species named after them, but since all the big cute stuff was found and branded a while ago, most of these idols are commemorated through repulsive little invertebrates. You got Scaptia, Beyonce, -A. The only similarity I can what? gather here is Queen Bee. It looks like a bee, both not a real bee. There's Anomphilus Jagarius, an old stone named after an old stone. In in 2007, one Jason Bond, a professor of biology at UC Davis, dubbed this little dude Mermechia Fila Neil Youngy to honor his favorite musician, no, which caused okay. my man to... I get, I get that, you know, it's, it's like finders keepers when it comes to names, but... There's got to be some kind of scientific review process, right? Stephen we Colbert to go on TV and profess his utter indignation oh, at not having a spider named after himself. So naturally, oh, the gosh. next year, Bond actually went on the Colbert Report to announce the naming of apostatist Stephen Colbert. So <laughs> if that gives any of you epic biologists out there any ideas, you know, I wouldn't be opposed. Samosaurus. Please, I would do anything for the love of God. I'll even take a liking. The world of politics is by no means immune to this phenomenon. Obama alone has fucking nine, as do a load of other presidents. Trump's got a mom with funny hair, Bush has a fungus beetle, Reagan's a wasp, Carter's got a darter, and so forth. Even <laughs> Austria's most famous painter got the honor through this blind cave beetle. Mind you, it was 1933, so you can only blame the guy a tiny bit. Pre-Holocaust, pre-World War II. But we, we, I hope that name's changed. Hitler actually wrote him a letter saying, oh, thank you, my little entomolo mensch. And then went on to do, you know, Hitler things. Fun fact. Hitler was an animal was lover. stuck with just about the worst name you could have. It's also now facing extinction solely because of its value to Nazi memorabilia collectors. Guess oh what happens die hard. Oh, fictional characters have their yeah. fair share of species under their belt. On the topic of evil beetles, this one's named after Darth Vader because he kind of looks like his helmet, I guess. This was actually named okay, by the same guy who did cool, the Bush actually. one and belongs to the same genus. Hmm. There's also this mite, genus Darth Vaderum, which is a lot more accurate and frightening. In 2012, Dude, a single bone from cool. above the eye socket of a hitherto unidentified theropod dinosaur was being studied. And suddenly, under the light of the full moon, the guy working with the specimen had his neck cover with hair and his lips clench into a pog and his endocrine system filled with... Oh. Soy, and he said, it's just like the eye oh, of Sauron. And then he started chewing on Funko Pops and sweating cream of meme and snorting G Fuel and shitting D20s everywhere until the <laughs> prostate stimulation made him. The dino's genus oh, is now Sauroniops from Eye of Sauron. This spider was named really? after Godric Gryffindor because it looks like the sorting hat. So I gotta stop this right now for a second. This is some of the most detailed research I think I've ever seen Sam do. 
like there was a lot going in so there's a lot of stuff that had to be looked up and put into this video as we have a horrifying nightmarish face of spongebob that i need to get off the screen spongebob has not a sponge but a fungus the legendary birds from pokemon <sighs> each have their own you um which is the best articuno moltres zapdos I like Zapdos, but they're all useful when you get to the Elite Four. You guessed it, Beetle. And the list goes on. <laughs> Scientists are nerds. Who knew? Anyway, while this all seems kind of chaotic, there is some method to the madness. One rule is the principle of priority. This okay. states that once somebody publishes their chosen name for a species for the first time, that's the name, and other taxonomists typically can't change it. This has led to plenty of misnomers like, coined by whoever got their foot in the door first. Can you, like, fight to the death if two people name it? Particularly in the case of the guys doing this stuff before we had the luxury of genetic analysis. Here's one. Red Panda? Nah. Shining Cat. Coined in 1825. To be fair, they're actually about <laughs> as close to cats as they are Red to pandas actual are pandas, cool. so whatever. Here's two. Capsicum Chinense. Eaten there? Sure. Native? Only off by around half a globe where yeah. literally all hot peppers came from. Yeah, this principle right. holds true even if someone thinks they found a new species, only to later discover that it Cheaters. was already named. For example, in 1824, one John Edward Gray documented the Plain Z calling it Equus Burchellii, or Burchell's Horse, named after a renowned naturalist of the day. Little did he know, back in 1785, some other douche classified this character as the Quagga. The last Quagga died in a Dutch prison in 1883. Right. So, why do we care? So are they, well, yeah, I've seen those. Is it some weird thing in some kind of messed up stage of evolution where it's like a zebra and then some other horse-like thing? In the 2000s, scientists decided to scrape some gunk off a dry quagga pelt and study its DNA. And from that they realized, wait a minute, apparently this guy and zebras could have, you know, made a little plaid in the hay together. So yeah. technically they're one species. And today they're both called quagga. Sounds kind of asinine, oh, but then again, that so makes a lot more sense. and that worked out fine. Just to maintain the distinction, <laughs> the extinct subspecies was renamed quagga quagga, so you know it's the real quagga. This double naming convention is has been done with a lot of subspecies in fact wild wild Redundant. horse spotted spotted panther or my favorite gorilla 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 just like yeah <laughs> it's the gorillas gorilla that ever gorilled fuck you want from me a closely gorilla cubed related rule also states that the names of all taxa have to be unique so if two people coincidentally name Garfield. any taxa on the same thing the older one gets to stay Fight and the, the new death. one gets the boot like if you saw a genus called echidna you'd think it was you know an echidna right well no that'd make too much sense for a while it was true from 1797 to 1811 then it was pointed out that someone else already called a genus of moray eels echidna back in 1788 so the real echidna had to be changed to tachyglossus or quick tongue then a decade later a dude did the same thing for a genus of vipers Another 22 years passed, people discovered the same thing, and they were renamed to Bitis, because they Bitis. That one at least made a <laughs> bit of sense, given that the original echidna from Greek mythology Mermaid? was half lady, half snake, but who oh. cares at this point. Anyway, I've just barely scraped the surface of all the goofy names out there, so feel free to post more down below. That's all I've got for now. Till next time, I'm Sam Manella, and I'll see you in 2025. <laughs> Great timing for a, a longevity joke. All right, let's finish this up. All right, that was seriously one of the most impressive Salmonella videos that I have come across. It was like I said, you know, earlier, it is just packed with details and evidence and examples there. All of them fascinating. This is great. I hope this is the new Salmonella going forward. I mean, we got to have the humor and he did that, but it's just like super impressive to do that. I mean, it was like a nine minute video. He usually doesn't go that long with some of these videos. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if that's just he was putting in a lot of work for it or whatever. But just, I'm happy. I'm just happy he's back. Hopefully he gets to more great historical topics. Um, I love any topics that he covers here. And there's some history, of course, in here. But I love the special uh, uh, historical stories that he finds. And Sam, if you've heard this, uh, or if you're watching this, uh, do more of that. I'd love to see that but everyone's going to watch whatever you do. <laughs> all right, with that, the original video link is going to be down below. Make sure you give it a view, give it a like, share it all over the place. Make sure Sam Anella knows that we know he's back and then he is appreciated. All right, with that, we'll see you next time. Bye.